Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the steps of our hypothesis testing when we are doing a goodness of fit or when we want to ask this question of does my categorical data follow an expected distribution. Okay, so the data type that we're going to have is going to be categorical. And specifically, we are going to have a, categor a categorical data that has uh, many different um, subtypes. Or in, in other words, like we have categorical data where we might have red, yellow, blue, green, and orange as possible outcomes. Uh, so maybe instead of subtypes, we'll call this as outcomes. Okay. So our population is still, we're going to be looking at, you know, whatever group we're looking at, like all cars in a car lot, uh, all ethnicities, so we're looking at the true distribution of ethnicities on a campus, and the parameter that we are looking at now is the distribution. Okay, assumptions, the assumptions that, that need to be met are we need a minimum a minimum expected value of 5 for every outcome all right so let's do just a simple scenario so let's suppose that I have a six-sided dice. Okay, and on this dice I have uh, six different colors. So let me get up just a little kind of graphic real quick. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so suppose that these are like blue, this is green, this is yellow, this is red, this is white, and we'll do purple. Okay, and instead of being a dice, let's have this be a car lot. And let's say that we assume that this car lot buys them uniformly distributed. All car colors, we get the same one. So if we would do like our expected distribution, if they were in fact uniformly distributed, this would be one sixth, one sixth, one sixth, one sixth. One six and one six. Now it doesn't have to be one six. Uh, if we thought that it was a different distribution, uh, we could, you know, put maybe two six here and a third here and you know one eighth here. Anyway, so it just has to be sure that it adds up to one. Um, but for this one, since we're uniform, we're going to have them all be the exact same. Okay, so let's suppose that I took a sample of n equals thirty. So then my expected frequency is just the expected uh, frequency of blue multiplied by our sample size. So that would give me 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, and 5. All right, so would I in fact meet my assumption that the minimum expected value of 5 for every outcome here are all of my possible outcomes, and they in fact all are five. So I have a, uh, my, I'm okay to be able to go ahead and do my goodness of fit because my expected value has a minimum of five. Excellent. So now I'm ready to set up my hypotheses. And my hypothesis, the null hypothesis, is going to be that the variable 
follows distribution. And then the alternative is that variable does not follow all of the distribution. And so we can then also establish our alpha. And alpha is the same as always. We can set it up to you know, be 0 0.01, 0 0.05, you know, something along those lines. And our alpha is the same thing. It's like, how often do we want to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true? How often are we willing to make that, um, that type 1 error? All right, so when we're here in our testing method, when we're just comparing this distribution for a single uh, piece of categorical data, uh, we are doing this for with our goodness of fit. When we are trying to say that, hey, we have an expected distribution, and does, does our categorical variable actually follow this distribution? So we're at goodness of fit. Okay, so then we'd actually go out and collect our data. So suppose we actually did that. We can go through and get our observations. And suppose that we saw something like this. Uh, we'll have this be nine, let that be one, we'll have this guy be 10, let this guy be 1, and we'll have this guy be 7, and we'll have this last one be 2. Okay, now our observations don't hit this um, value of 5, but that's okay. Our assumption was based upon the expected number. So we've got our observations, and we've collected our data. Now we can actually calculate out our test statistic. And our test statistic that we are going to get is going to be a chi-squared. And I'll show in another video how we actually, um, the mathematics that are doing it and that our, um, and that our software will actually calculate the chi-squared for you and calculate out the p-value. Rejection is still the same if our p-value is less than alpha, we are going to reject. And then our conclusion. And in our conclusions, we actually are going to simplify things down. Uh, for these enhanced categorical analyses, we are not going to be doing a post hoc test, not like we've been doing with our numerical data. So what we are going to, to do is we can still uh, write out our conclusion by saying, you know, we have collected sufficient evidence or insufficient evidence, depending if we reject or fail to reject, the claim uh, that the true distribution of uh, you know, whatever we're measuring, so here this would be cars on the car lot, follows a specific distribution. And if it doesn't, we can say that uh, we, uh, we conclude that it's following some other distribution. And we're not going to go ahead and do the confidence interval or do that next step. We're just going to stop there to be able to say whether or not, uh, we're basically if we can cl conclude or not, if our variable is following a, um, an expected distribution.